So today I'm going to be presenting Pinpoint, uh, which is, as Brad described, a localization system that achieves sub-meter localization accuracy for uncooperative interfering radios. Uh, this work is, uh, is, is joint research with my, with my lab mate, Kiran Yoshi, and uh, our advisor, Sachin Kadi, at Stanford University. So you and I, we've all had the same anecdotal experiences. Our devices appear to have a strong connection to the AP, but somehow we still experience poor performance. More often than not, interference is to blame. And when speaking with network administrators, we found that interference is actually the number one cause for poor wireless performance. Yet in spite of these pervasive problems, we often know very little about the nature of this interference, whether it's another Wi-Fi network, Bluetooth, or Zigbee. And often, we don't know the location of the interfering radio as well. So without localization, troubleshooting these performance problems becomes very, very difficult. And hence, people believe that wireless is sometimes unreliable. One might imagine that we could, extensive, we could leverage the extensive prior work that has tackled indoor localization to also localize these interferers. But localizing interfering radios is a different challenge. First, most of the prior localization approaches are RSSI based and work typically with Wi-Fi. For example, they measure the RSSI of the Wi-Fi signal from multiple vantage points as shown here, and then leverage propagation models and triangulation techniques to localize. However, when localizing interference, the source is often going to be a non-Wi-Fi radio. So cooperation between the clients and the APs cannot be taken for granted. Further, it's actually unlikely that we can get a good estimate of the interfering signal's RSSI because there could be multiple interfering signals present from concurrent transmitting radios. When the APs try to measure RSSI, they can only measure the aggregate signal strength and cannot differentiate between the different sources as shown here. Another class of, RSS, uh, of localization techniques utilize non-RSSI uh, approaches, such as range finding, time of arrival, but many of these techniques require modifications to and cooperation from the clients. And in this case, this is pretty untenable since we're actually trying to localize interference, as we mentioned before. So Pinpoint is a localization platform that we've designed, and it's built on top of existing Wi-Fi AP infrastructure. It designs novel algorithms to first discriminate between the different types of interfering signals, then distinguish the line of sight angles of arrival in a non-line-of-sight multipath environment, typical of indoor office scenarios. And lastly, it aggregates all this information from multiple APs at a central location to triangulate the interference. We've implemented Pinpoint using standard warp software radios equipped with four antennas as the standard RF hardware for MIMO. And we found that Pinpoint is significantly more accurate than both the standard RSSI techniques that I described before and even traditional angle of arrival approaches. And Pinpoint, we found, as I'll show later, achieves sub-meter accuracy in our testbed scenario, even when there's significant multipath and in interference. So I've motivated this work with the, with the notion of uh, troubleshooting network performance. But if we can actually build a platform that provides sub-meter localization accuracy without any cooperation from the client, or even specialized hardware, we can do a lot more than just troubleshoot enterprise Wi-Fi networks. Such a platform could be used to enable a host of user-generated applications, such as targeted advertising, where retailers target mobile devices carried by shoppers as they walk down specific aisles. It can be used for general purpose indoor navigation, like finding your departure gate at an airport, or even finding your way around a new conference venue, such as this one. And lastly, it can even be used to enable a whole host of real-life analytics. For instance, it can provide you insight into how much time you actually spend at the gym, and even which pieces of equipment you spend your time on. So these applications are only the tip of the iceberg. But the point I want to make is that sub-meter indoor localization could enable a whole range of new applications that we haven't even thought of. So as I alluded to earlier, Pinpoint's design flow consists of three main components. And in today's talk, I'm going to be covering each of these components at a high level just for the sake of time. But to fully appreciate the algorithmic complexity, I recommend that you read the paper, which provides a lot more rigorous analysis with additional details. So let's start the talk first with how Pinpoint differentiates between multiple uncooperative interferers, as this is going to allow us to tease apart and process each source of interference individually in the second and the third steps. So to differentiate between overlapping sources of interference, the key is to note that for any man-made communication signal, there exists repeating patterns which are unique and necessary for operation. So if you look at Wi-Fi, for example, there's a cyclic prefix where at the end of each OFDM symbol block, the symbols from the beginning are repeated. 
The cyclic prefix is needed to preserve ISI and preserve orthogonality of the OFDM subcarriers. And this cyclic prefix is going to repeat at a frequency which is unique to Wi-Fi and can actually be used to identify the signal. Now, this type of repeating pattern is, is, is inherent to every type of man-made signal. And for instance, in Zigbee, the transmissions consist of symbol bits modulated on top of periodic bandwidth limited pulses. And so if this sounds familiar, you know, it, it, we, we presented it at, at, uh, at SIGCOM in 2010 in a platform called DOF. So Pinpoint first leverages this prior platform that we developed in order to exploit these repeating pulses to build feature vectors and identify signal types. The feature vectors that DOF builds, Pinpoint then utilizes to discriminate between the different sources of interference and leverage to use uh, to find the line of sight uh, angle of arrival, as I show later. But I'm first going to give a highlight of how we actually extract feature vectors from these patterns. So the key insight is that if there's a repeating pattern, then when we correlate the received signal against itself delayed by a fixed amount, the correlation peaks when the delay is equal to the period at which the pattern is repeating. So to demonstrate what I mean, let's look at this function. For an appropriate value of tau corresponding to the time period between the repeating patterns, the function here is going to be maximized, since the repeating patterns are essentially aligned. Further, because these patterns are going to repeat at a particular frequency, the second exponential term is calculating the frequency at which these patterns repeat. And so that alpha we term the pattern frequency. So let's take an example. Here I'm plotting a Wi-Fi and a Zigbee signal. And I'm showing it for different delays and at different frequencies. You can see that there are unique peaks at specific delays and frequencies corresponding to when the repeating patterns in the different signals are aligned. You can see here that this feature vector essentially allows us to discriminate the, the Wi-Fi signal in, uh, in red from the Zigbee signal in blue. Now what Pinpoint does is it measures the relative strength or the spikes at particular pattern frequencies, which we call the CSSI, or Cyclic Signal Strength Indicator, for every source of interference. This, in effect, acts as a proxy for the RSSI that I mentioned earlier, but it's robust to multiple overlapping interferers who overlap in time and frequency. Second, Pinpoint then utilizes these feature vectors as inputs to the rest of the algorithm, and these feature vectors are very robust to noise because noise is stationary but still they embed the phase information needed to compute additional inputs for our localization algorithm. So after we've differentiated between the interfering sources, we can then process each individually. But what additional data points can we leverage that will enhance localization performance besides CSSI? Well, I've alluded to it earlier, but because APs today are typically equipped with multiple antennas, another very useful data point for localization is the angle of arrival of each interferer signal. But if we want to use angle of arrival as an input to our localization algorithm, the second problem that we now have to tackle is the fact that in an indoor environment, the directions that the signals are actually arriving from are very difficult to estimate because there's significant amounts of multipath being caused by the environment, which actually obscure the true direction or the true angle of arrival that the interferer is with respect to the access point. So before I get into the exact description of how we find the angle of arrival, the line of sight component, let me give a brief background on, as to how angles of arrival are estimated with antenna arrays today. So let's say that we have an access point with multiple antennas, and the signal is arriving at an angle theta. So here I'm show, showing the wavefront and the direction that the wavefront is hitting each of the antennas. The physical implication of this is that the same signal is received at different times at each of the different antennas. So in this example, for um, the signal is first hitting the first antenna, and then the second, and then so on. And there's a unique delay at which each of the signals is impinging on the antennas. Now, depending on the angle of arrival, each, each antenna element is going to experience a unique delay. And this delay is directly a function of the angle of arrival at which that signal is arriving. Now, representation for a single signal can be written in matrix form, where Y of t here is the vector representing the arriving phase shifted signal at each of the antennas. And phi of theta represents the corresponding phase shifts for each of the antennas. Now notice that each of the phase shifts at the other antennas are calculated relative to the display of this, uh, the, the, the delay of the signal hitting the first antenna. Now what happens when we have a multipath environment? In a multipath environment, there are multiple signals which arrive at the antenna at different angles. Now, this complicates things slightly because now we no longer have just one variable and one equation, as you can see here. We have multiple variables and still just one received signal, so one equation with which to compute all these multiple angles. As you can see here, the received signal is typically a summation of all the received multipads, 
and only becomes more complicated as you add in more and more paths. But what does multipath physically mean? Well, it means that the radio waves are traveling different paths and reflecting off walls and other structures in the indoor environment before arriving at the antenna array. Now, we define a non-line-of-sight environment as one in which the direct line-of-sight path is obstructed, and it's often going to be masked by the reflected attenuations, which arrive at different angles. Here you can see that the line-of-sight path is obstructed by a wall, and as such, it suffers much worse attenuation than the multipath components which are being reflected around the wall. In non-line-of-sight environments, these multipath comp components can be anywhere from 10 dB to 30 dB stronger than the line-of-sight component itself. Now, Pinpoint utilizes a novel technique to detect this weak line-of-sight component, which I'm going to describe next. But before I get into the details, I want to point out that the technique that I'm about to describe doesn't actually operate on the raw time samples that I just used to illustrate the AOA estimation process. Pinpoint instead operates on the feature vectors that I described in the first step, because these feature vectors are extremely robust to noise and interference. However, the relative signal strength resulting from the multipath still exists. And this is the problem that we have to solve next. Now, remember, because each of these signals are traveling different distances to the antenna, they're going to arrive at different time instances. And the line of sight component, even if it's coming through a wall or a door, is still always going to arrive first. Now, notice that because these multipath components arrive at different instances in time, with delay spreads typically ranging on the orders of tens of nanoseconds, there's a portion of the received signal which contains information from only the direct line of sight path. For example, in this figure, the portion of the signal in between the time interval T1 and T2 is unaffected by the other multipath signals. So what we want to do is we want to isolate these samples and compute their corresponding angle of arrival. This gives us a clean angle of arrival estimate of the line of sight component of the signal independent of the other multipath components. Now, to do so, we use a form of hypothesis testing to detect the uninterfered portion. We build a model for what the signal should look like if there were only one direct line of sight component. And we test this model against what is actually received at every single time sample. Now, by subtracting what we've received from what we've modeled, we can then form a residual component which is calculated at every single time instance or every single sample that we received and provides a measure of how well that actual received signal, which could be the summation of one, two, or three, or more multipath components, actually fits the angle of arrival model for just a single line of sight component. So what we want to do is we want to find the value at which the, this residual is minimized. Here I'm plotting what that residual function looks like the inverse of that residual function looks like on the right. And so what we're looking for here is spikes. The x-axis here shows the calculation at every single time instance or every single time sample and the corresponding difference in angle of arrival from the model line of sight signal. So you can see here that the residual function is going to peak at an angle corresponding to the true line of sight angle of arrival, and the delay corresponds to the first arriving line of sight component. Now, a more rigorous uh, mathematical model is going to be provided in the paper but this, in essence, is how we calculate the line of sight angle of arrival of the interference, even in multipath environments. So now that we've been able to identify and discriminate between each type of interference, and also measure the signal strength and corresponding angle of arrival at each AP, the last step of Pinpoint is to aggregate all the information at a centralized server and process the data to localize the interfering radios. The procedure works as follows. Each AP first measures the CSSI and the angle of arrival to provide two estimates a range estimate, and an angle estimate. The central server, knowing the location and orientation of each AP, can then calculate through an optimization procedure the most likely location of each interfering source. So that pretty much wraps up the high-level description of how Pinpoint works. So now I'm going to present a couple results for how Pinpoint performed in terms of localization accuracy in our indoor testbed and show how different factors such as AP placement, received signal SNR, and overlapping sources of interference impact performance. So we run an experiment where there are multiple warp software radios deployed on a single office floor, and these act as localization APs. These APs are attempting to localize three different sources of interference, which are deployed at random locations in the office. We compare Pinpoint's performance against two other standard approaches. The first is based on a standard angle of arrival estimation algorithm called MUSIC, and the second is based on measuring RSSI. Pinpoint, of course, as you noticed, utilizes a hybrid approach. So it combines both CSSI information along with AOA, uh, and this allows it to make a more informed localization estimate. 
So first, what I'm going to show here is the compared overall localization performance of the three different methods. So here, the x-axis is showing the distance error, and the y-axis is a fraction of the time the particular error has occurred. Note that the x scale is actually logarithmic and not linear. Now, Pinpoint shows better localization performance for either the music AOA-based or the traditional RSSI-based approaches in both the median error when Pinpoint is accurate within a meter, while the other approaches have errors larger than three meters, and in the tail of the 90th percentile, where Pinpoint's accuracy is almost as good as the median performance of the other two approaches. Now, Pinpoint's performance is better than that of the RSSI-based system because DOF and the use of CSSI measurements enable Pinpoint to disentangle and discriminate between the different sources of interference, more accurately localizing each. And Pinpoint outperforms music because music, in essence, can't distinguish between line of sight and multipath reflections. So as I'll show later, in most cases, the angle of arrival estimated by music is just going to correspond to the strongest multipath component, not necessarily that one belonging to the line of sight. So this plot looks somewhat similar, but here what I'm showing is actually how the localization performance occurs in instances where interferers actually overlap at the AP. And so this is to show the explicit benefit that disentangling the sources of interference has on localization performance. So I'll toggle back and forth between this slide and the last, but what you can see is that the performance of pinpoint is very close to that of the overall performance case, where it increases from 2.9 to about 1 meter in the median error, and the 90th, the long tail actually stays about the same. On the other hand, the music and the RSSI-based approaches degrade significantly, especially RSSI, which sees its median error double. So this is natural because essentially what Pinpoint is doing is it's disentangling sources of interference before it actually processes this, leading to stronger localization results. Now let's dig into how Pinpoint's angle of arrival performance looks relative to that of music. Here I'm plotting the CDF of the angle of arrival estimation error for Pinpoint as well as for music. So this CDF is comprised of the scenarios only in which the direct line of sight component between the AP and the source of interference is always obstructed, and in this case, the multipath is going to dominate. So we can see that the pinpoint's angle of arrival estimation is much more accurate than music as expected in both the median as well as the long tail. And again, the main reason for this improvement stems from the fact that music is simply trying to estimate the line of or the sorry the strongest multipath component, which in this case does not correspond to the line of sight. Now you see there's a knee in the curve, and this actually corresponds to the fact that pinpoint, you know, as accurate as it may be, is not unlimited, and so. At a point where the, the strongest multipath component is significantly stronger than the line of sight component, even Pinpoint is not able to detect this. And we found that this difference is about 10 dB from the strongest multipath component to the line of sight component. But in general, um, our optimization algorithm actually takes all this into account when it's processing. So the line of sight uh, estimation at the, at the median is something that we can still leverage in Pinpoint. So in summary, Today I've presented Pinpoint, a localization system that can be built on existing Wi-Fi infrastructure. Pinpoint is capable of discriminating between multiple sources of interference and implements a, a novel line of sight angle of arrival estimation algorithm that is robust to multipath. In order to better localize the interferers, as we've shown here, Pinpoint actually disentangles them first and then uses line of sight as well as other optimization algorithms to combine and localize within a meter in a wide variety of scenarios. Pinpoint's design really highlights how one can solve interference localization tasks by leveraging rich information hidden in the RF signals. We believe that the data encoded in these RF signals surrounding us can be mined for many more practical applications, including mapping and context detection, amongst many others. And our future work aims to explore novel signal processing algorithms, which will further enable such applications. Thank you. Uh, hi, Sartha Grover from George Day. Uh, good work. I just wanted to confirm, like, your CSSI approach, um, so you can only differentiate between two protocols, two different protocols like Wi-Fi and Zigbee, or can you differentiate between two Wi-Fi or? So it depends, right? If the Wi-Fi signals are operating at, you know, the exact same, exact, yeah. you know, five parameters, essentially, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to differentiate between two Wi-Fi signals when they exactly overlap in frequency, right? But you can think about it as this. Wi-Fi as a protocol, has inherent techniques built in to overlap that exact case, right? Mm -hmm. So Wi-Fi in its, in its protocol will, will seek to avoid instances where it overlaps exactly in frequency. So the idea here is that the 
the instances in which you want to detect overlapping in frequency uh, sources of interference are going to be when they're of different protocols. When you have two different Wi-Fi signals and they're on two different frequencies, mm -hmm. that's something that we can identify using this technique. So uh, realistically, in um, like what we're looking for in localization scenarios is basically differentiate, differentiating between Wi-Fi devices usually, yeah. right? Uh, so in that case, is the angle of arrival thing the only part which contributes to you know, the differentiation, and uh, I mean, have you tested it with only Wi-Fi devices? Yeah, yeah, we have. Okay. So, so okay. pretty much what we found is that, so it, I, you can read about it a little bit more in the paper, but the optimization algorithm actually weights all these different inputs differently depending on what the inputs are, right? So if it's Wi-Fi and there's other sources of interfering Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. obviously something like the CSSI is not gonna be as robust. So in that case, exactly like you said, we're gonna leverage the angle of arrival a little bit more. But so the, if, you, if you look at the paper, the optimization algorithm is going to weigh all these different inputs depending on the situation. So. Okay, uh, Jay Sean from University College London. Hey. I have two questions. The first question is uh, music. Uh, it's, it's a lot of paper they have mentioned like music is not good for indoor environment. So you need to use some modified version like mm -hmm. a special smoothing. Yeah. So is it a fair comparison? You compare your skin with like a mu just music. No, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fair. I think what, 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 um, what we're, we're trying to show here is that with respect to music, the, the objective is different, right? Because even in, the, in the, the whitening approaches to music, what it's really trying to do is uncorrelate the received paths, right? It's still not trying to localize any particular path. If you, even if you take music with the modified approaches, it's still, in essence, localizing the strongest, inter, strongest multipath component, right? So what we're really trying to show is that our approach is not actually identifying simply the strongest line of sight component, or so, sorry, the sim simply the strongest multipath component. It's identifying the true line of sight component of the angle of arrival. Okay, but assume if, if you have like a multiple antennas, like a seven antennas, mm -hmm. actually music is trying to identify like a, maybe the strongest five or six signals. Yes. So very probably the direct path is still among the first like uh, strongest five or six antennas. Six yeah, signals. Exactly. And then that's going to depend also on the resolution of your ADC yeah. and a lot of other processing things too, right? So, I mean, um, that, that's definitely a valid point. I, I'd also like to point out that something like this is kind of orthogonal to different angle of arrival estimation approaches, right? Because if you look at how we're doing the optimization, you can use music or you can use a different angle of arrival estimation algorithm and actually achieve similar types of localization performance because the optimization algorithm will essentially handle and take those different inputs differently. Okay. So. Okay, so my second question is, uh, so how many packets you need to use in order to achieve this kind of accuracy? So in terms of averaging? Yes. Yeah, so we, if, if you look in the paper, what we actually do is we mine data con uh, consecutively because you can imagine we're, I mean, we're trying to detect on the, order, uh, on the order of samples, right? So you're gonna have a lot of noise in those errors. So what we're doing is we mine 100 estimates, essentially. So 100 packets, effectively. So. Okay. okay, got it, thank you. Yep. 